Hey everyone! Sorry, today that went on way faster than it normally does, but <clears throat> excuse my voice. So anyway, I wanted to come on here and do a little kind of Q and A. Um, whether you guys want to ask the questions on here live right now, or I kind of wanted to answer a lot of questions that I get on the daily. Um, so the last live video that I did, um, I was talking about my cool sculpting and from there I feel like we kind of got into lips and we got into, you know, hair products, into my haircut and into um, a bunch of stuff. Basically all beauty questions normally, obviously that's what the questions are about. Um, my sleeves are completely uneven. <laughs> um, but so I figured and normally I'll come on here kind of like with a topic and then I feel like I kind of go off topic to try and answer your questions a little bit. So I just thought why not just come and kind of answer your questions. So while there aren't um, much questions yet, I will kind of just start. Um, how are you? I am good. Thank you for asking. And Lynn said I love your hair. Thank you. So um, I... I think one of the main things with the cool sculpting video that I feel like the feedback that I got was like why would you show us before and after fit photos like why not just like show us your body and um, I feel like the main reason was because I wanted to show before and after and I can't show you my body before and I think showing a before photo and then showing you my body is always kind of hard to tell because it's not like hey I've lost like 50 pounds obviously that you could definitely see. Uh, this was just like a more minor kind of result, if that makes any sense. So I feel like you do need to see the before and after in order to see it. But if you guys do want me to show you like my actual body and um, just because I in no way wanted you guys to think that I'm just like trying to show you, you know, like a miracle kind of um, beauty treatment that like it doesn't actually work or whatever so if you guys do want to see that in person let me know I am super like not comfortable with that but um I do feel like I also owe it to you guys to to be honest and to show you guys what you guys want to see so um sorry totally cover that but I mean as you guys can tell like I'm, it's not like I've ever posted any like bikini hauls or anything like that so that's totally not me but like I said if you guys really want to see I will show you but um yeah everyone's talking about my hair in the longest t or for the longest time I've been kind of curling my hair and lately I've kind of just been letting it straight I got a haircut recently like what a week and a half ago maybe two weeks ago and every time I get a haircut I would just feel like oh my god I have no hair um I'm just one of those people and so every time I do that, I feel like the more I curl it, like the shorter it looks. So I think I've just been wearing it straight for the fact that I feel I I see more of my length, which is such a silly idea. But anyway, Adam definitely prefers my hair straight. And uh, a lot of people have been saying like, oh my gosh, have you gone blonder? So I definitely have it. Actually, a week ago, I, uh, you guys can't even see my roots, but... I did my hair, like uh, highlighted my hair, sorry, and I was like really blonde, like almost solidly blonde. And I don't know what I was thinking, it's just like I miss the spring and the summer and I want to be bright. And I did that and I was like in a hat for like a week. It was just so not like me. And I remember like four or five years ago, every time I'd get like my hair highlighted, I just felt like so much more like myself and I just felt like my hair was bright and it looked shiny and healthy and it was always like so exciting and just lately and I don't know if it's just like the whole like balayage like just more lived in like rooty look um I don't know if that's just been I mean I know that that's all I do like at work but I don't know if that's just so like rubbed off on me that like now seeing myself so completely blonde I just feel so weird um I hated it so I actually went back and added a ton of dark roots if you can see that so it was silly I basically highlighted my hair all over and then went over it and added 
dark to the roots. So, um, the life of a hairdresser. Um, okay, let's see what people are saying because they just go start talking and then, um, let's see. Absolutely love your hair. This best way to fix over bleached hair, rubber like elastic. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is the video that I have for you guys um, coming tomorrow. Um, we are finalizing and finishing editing that video, but tomorrow's video is going to be how to fix dry damaged hair and so that you can identify whether your hair is dry or damaged because there is a difference and I constantly get asked like is my hair dry or damaged or both so i would never done a video kind of deciphering those two and not only that but like pro uh, products um, and processes you can do at the salon like what you can do basically to heal it both at the salon and at home so yeah, so stay tuned for that. And it's one of the other perks of joining a live video. You know what's coming next. Um, okay, so everyone's asking like, did you love Cool Sculpt and do you think it was worth it? I I do definitely think it was worth it. I, I, I don't see how it can not be worth it. I feel, um, because I feel like Say if you're like a lot skinnier than I am and like more petite, then the tinier you are, like the more difference you're gonna see because taking off like this much is gonna be a bigger difference on your body. And I also feel like if you're someone that has a lot more to lose, then you're definitely gonna notice it because it's something you've like been wanting for so long, if that makes sense. Um, so I definitely had amazing results. I'm really happy. Um, so I did one session back in December. That was my first session. That's when I did my first official video about cool sculpting. And so that I was invited to go on, get it done, like I said. So that's why I felt like I had nothing to lose. I looked into how safe it was and the fact that it, you know, was very non-invasive. Um, I just figured, and I'm not like paying for it, like what do I have to lose? I figured if anything, it would be, you know, a great experience to share with you guys and to either let you know, yes, this is amazing or save your money. So um, when I did go in for my second session, I paid for that myself and I think that shows how much, um, how happy I am with the results. And again, they are subtle, but it's like in the areas I did them in, it would have to be subtle. I mean, it's not like, it's not liposuction. So they're not going to like suck out like five pounds of fat in like one specific body area. That makes sense. Um, so, so yeah, I'm extremely happy. I think any girl that has, or boy, <laughs> um, that has a trouble area and I already went, um, into this in the previous video, but a trouble area is an area that every time whether you gain weight or lose, when you gain weight, it's the first area you gain weight in, and when you lose weight, it's the last place. So if you've kind of done this up and down a couple times in your life, it's basically the hardest part, and it only gets worse, if that makes sense. So for me, it was flanks and inner thighs, so that's that. That's what I did both times. So the second time, I went in um, and did the same areas because... I just figured, like, I was so tempted to do abs just because, like, the fact that that is an option, that's amazing. Um, but I've always felt like my abs is not my trouble area. Now, that doesn't mean that my, I think my abs look great. It just means when I'm at my goal weight, I think my abs look great, if that makes sense. Um, so, I, I'm definitely not at my goal weight. I would love to lose another five seven pounds but what girl doesn't so um so I figured I would stick to the areas that are my trouble areas so for my second session I did do again um love handles and flanks sorry that's the correct word <laughs> flanks and inner thighs and um do you think coconut oil on hair works I don't know why I feel like my hair feels more dry when I wash it off um I definitely think it helps the hair. I definitely don't think it's bad in any way for the hair. I think it's not, so the molecule in coconut oil is not small enough to penetrate deep into the hair to make a huge difference, if that makes sense. So it's not gonna heal hair that's like chemically damaged, like um, 
like from bleach or anything like that. Um, it may help over time, but it's not going to just like drastically in a week heal it. Um, my hair broke off. Will it grow back? Absolutely. Hair will continue to grow back as long as you are alive. And um, when it seems like hair isn't growing back, it normally is just because the ends are breaking off. And that means that the hair is just damaged. But um, if that is the case, I recommend getting a trim, letting your hair grow out. Don't, don't do much else to it. Don't, don't color it anymore, um, at least for a couple of weeks, months if you can. And definitely lay off the uh, heat styling. I use argan oil on my hair. Yes, argan oil is amazing. Just make sure that it's a good, high-quality argan oil because there's a lot of argan oils out there that are really diluted. So if you get, you know, a pretty big bottle for like 20 bucks, it's not it's not high-quality argan oil. Um, if you think about it, an argan nut is so tiny, so you need a lot of extraction from each nut. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, in order to get a lot of oil. So um, it's not an easy uh, natural oil to produce or to um, get. So that's why it normally is expensive. Okay. Uh, does dry shampoo use damage hair or dry it out? No. Um, normally dry shampoo is formulated so it's safe and all of that. Um, I think my only issue with dry shampoo is anyone that <laughs> washes their hair like once a week, I, I do feel then that that is too much film on the scalp um, and it could lead to hair thinning years down the road if you're doing it all the time. Um, I would definitely recommend if you do, if you are a dry shampoo user like daily, constantly, um, I would definitely recommend doing um, an uh, sorry an apple cider vinegar rinse once in a while or a good clarifying shampoo once in a while just to really really make sure that you are cleansing the scalp um, well okay I'm just going back because I missed a lot of your comments as always um, how to get your hair to grow fast and that's just having healthy hair so again stick around for tomorrow's video um, and I have lots of good information on there on how you can heal and obviously grow your hair um, when when you have done long to short haircuts have did people do they regret it um I would say for the most I <laughs> I would say 90% of people that get bangs, like straight across bangs, regret it. And I almost always try, I don't want to say to talk my clients out of it, but I try and explain like how it's going to be growing out and blah, blah, blah. And normally they're like, yeah, but I still want bangs or I want to change or whatever. So they're very set on it. Of course, I'll give it to them. But I always like to explain kind of uh, what's entailed for like the next couple of months. Um, as far as cutting someone's hair I, I think the lob is kind of like what people have been requesting kind of lately and i feel like that that people absolutely love because it's not like a ton of commitment you can still put your hair up you can still do a lot of cute hairstyles with it and in a couple months your hair is kind of back to you know fairly long length um so those i don't do like short like pixie cuts or things like that. Um, if I ever have a client that does want that or requests that, um, I send them to someone that I feel is specialized in those cuts. That's definitely not my style. Um, not that I don't think it looks good aesthetically, but that's just, as a hairdresser, we all have styles of, you know, both color and cut. And uh, I definitely do cuts to finish my color. Um, so that's normally like on longer hair or kind of shoulder length or chin length and longer. That's, I would say most of my clients are, are that way. I mean, normally you're not getting your hair balayaged and colored and bleached and stuff if you have kind of shorter hair than that. So that's just sort of my clientele. So like the the haircuts that I, that are requested to me, the 
people don't normally I'm trying to think in the last year or last two if there's anybody that's regretted it and I honestly like I said anyone that gets the law like ends up loving it um so people are saying uh, wait what are people saying people are saying stuff about the lips again and again I definitely think that in a live video especially like in this like I'm like elbows length from the camera so I feel like how close I am I always think my lips look so huge but I really want to take a picture I feel in like when at night when I wash my face I really feel like my lips are actually very subtle and suiting to my face shape but apparently everyone thinks that they look really big but um I feel like when I got just the bottom just to even it out you know because like I said I, it, it was never an insecurity of mine, like, ever, like, not even in my most insecure teenage years. Um, it's been more since um, I've, like, been on camera and I see myself and I have to edit my face <laughs> or edit my videos with my face in it, like, hours a week. And so I'm, like, staring at everything that's, like, why is that off? Why is that crooked? And no, it's not that I'm, like, nitpicking myself. It's just, like, holy crap, like, I didn't realize, like, my bottom lip is that crooked. So... Um, when I went and got the bottom, but I feel like now everyone's like, oh my gosh, that's so big, and like, what are you doing to your face? Then now I'm like, people are gonna talk shit anyway, like, I wanna get the top done, I wanna get everything done. <laughs> but, um, I'm totally kidding, you guys. But, um, I think if anything, what this has taught me is do whatever the fuck, sorry, ah! I've prided myself in not having said a bad word here and there, and I just said it in a live video, so... Sorry guys, <laughs> and for anyone that does get offended by that, or if anyone is watching with small children, I apologize. Um, but yeah, I feel like that I've always just been so careful to like not offend anyone and to you know really make my audience happy because obviously I feel like that is my job um, in the salon. It's to make my clients happy, and on YouTube is to make my viewers happy. Um, but that I, I've realized that it's impossible when you're working with one client I'm working on making that one client happy and that is a lot easier than getting on camera and making half a million people happy like that's just not gonna happen <laughs> um, God wasn't able to do it I sure as heck I'm not gonna be able to either and I I really do have to come to terms with that and that that's hard for me because I am such a person pleaser people pleaser um, I really am but I I've just realized like just do what you want. People are going to talk crap anyway. So if if I do something and I love it and I own it, I feel like people eventually will just kind of have to hop on board or dislike me and not watch me, which is fine too because if I would never want you to sit and watch me if you can't stand me or don't like me or whatever. So, and I'm definitely not one of those YouTubers um, that how do I say this, that of course I care about views and of course I care about growing on YouTube, of course. And um, like I said, this is my job, one of my jobs. And um, of course I care, but I, again, integrity and, you know, being honest with myself and me being happy and obviously the happiness of my audience is the most important. So um, I really just have to stick to just doing what makes me happy and hopefully that's the like the, the audience I attract is pretty similar um, Olive. Olive is once again joining us from the hallway <laughs> um, but yeah so but I feel like in the comments today a lot more people are saying that they actually think my lips look good others are saying that it they look huge but again moral of the story can't please everyone so okay so sorry I have I love your professionalism oh thank you I love your eyebrows I have a scar that goes through one of mine I've tried everything the brow was the give me brow um, what would you recommend to fill in a scar though um, I actually have two I have like three scars on my face if you guys haven't noticed I have this one down the middle of my forehead, which, hello, I already have the biggest forehead on earth, and, you know, then a huge, 
That was from, I was three years old, walking to my grandma's house, tripped on a rock and fell on another rock and split my forehead open, had to get stitches. My mom nearly fainted when she saw blood gushing out of my head. Um, so I've had that. Um, I've thought about getting it like lasered off, but I also feel like it's such a part of me. But Adam and everyone in my family says like, we don't notice it, but it's literally the first thing I see when I look at my face. Um, the other one is through here, and I, I always have a gap here, and that's actually from plucking, like over plucking for years. So it's not really a scar, but it's a permanent damage to my eyebrow. <laughs> and on this eyebrow, I have a scar here as well, but it's really just kind of like where the brow grows to, so you can't really see it. Um, but if I were to ever grow my brows like bush, well, I guess this is as low as my brows grow now, but um, I would have like a straight across line. It's like literally this whole section here, but I don't know if you can see that. And that was, I was getting out of a cab on a rainy day. The cab parked next to a pole and I literally was like giving him the money from the back seat and like getting up like in heels like at night and again it was raining and I just went smack into that pole and it was like, it was probably like one of the hardest hits I had to my head and I was like, hmm, like I wonder, like this doesn't feel okay. Like I almost, I literally thought I had broken like my brow bone and I was with Adam at the time and he was kind of like, whoa, are you okay? And I was like, whoa, like I almost like feel like I need to sit down and he was like, no, it looks fine, it looks fine. And then we were like walking, it was like a Saturday night, like after dinner kind of thing. And we were like gonna go meet friends and it was like we were walking down like a pretty busy street. There was like a, a lot of people outside. And this one guy was like, damn, you look gangster. What happened to you? And I was like, oh my God, like, can you tell? And like, I went and touched and my hand was just covered in blood. And I finally like found a mirror and it was like literally just like blood. I don't know how I didn't feel that. Uh, I don't know if it was like from the impact, my face almost went numb ish <laughs> that I don't know like it looked bad like it looked like like straight out of like a movie scene it was so like anything like near bone like eyebrow and stuff like blood just goes everywhere um I think I did have a mild concussion that day anyway I don't know how this has gone into um scar stories but um that's what I've got going on in my face okay uh Okay, do you ever think about changing your hair color to something different than blonde? Actually, I think probably almost weekly I dream of going brunette. <laughs> Not dream, I mean I could do it if I want, but um, I, I just think it's so much easier. I think when I see a girl with like just dark, dark hair, it just looks classy no matter what. Like you don't have to tone, you don't have to do anything, your hair's just dark. Um, and dark hair kind of goes with any single, every single color that you want to wear. So, I, a part of me like wants to, but I, I know that the second that my hair is dark, I just feel like it doesn't suit my face. I feel like it doesn't, it's not me. So I know that I, in a couple of months, I would want to be like going back to blonde and I know that my hair can't take that. So um, I would stay more in the blonde kind of family. <laughs> um, I think if anything, I think I do want to have a lot more relaxed roots. I think hair like, um, I don't think I would ever go back to like black dark kind of hair. Um, I think if I went dark, I would go more like Mariana Hewitt kind of color or um, JoJo's hair, the ex-bachelorette. If you guys follow her, she's adorable. I love her. Um, like that kind of color, I think, is as dark as I would go. Um, I want to come down to San Francisco for a cut. What is your starting price? So I get asked this all the time. So if you, I have a blog and like a website where you can see prices and it's just lbangs.com and then under the section where it says my salon, click on that and that'll have all the info like location and um, phone number for texting for an appointment and all the price is all the prices are listed on there. Um, cuts normally start at 75 though. That, that was your question, so. Um, okay. Crystal Torres says, hi Sylvia. Hi Crystal. Um, 
Okay, someone said, please give me your thoughts on Monet and Old Pikes. Again, that's what tomorrow's video is all about. Um, uh, not so much. Um, I did talk about a Monate product, but I didn't go into like the whole Monate line. Um, I saw someone else ask earlier too, and there's just lots of controversy going around with Monate, and um, I stand by my word that I absolutely 100% love the products and the brand. I'm going to continue to use the products. Um, I got to grow my hair this long while being blonde because of Monate, and for that, I will forever owe that to them and will be loyal using the product. Whether or not I'm selling it or working for the company, I will continue to use it. So there's my two cents on that. Um, now the controversy and the stuff that about where it's all over the news and stuff. Um, and I'm going to give you my opinion on what's going on. Um, anytime any product, good or bad, uh, let's focus on the products that are good, that gets a lot of buzz and gets a lot of, you know, a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people using it, a lot of people trying it. Um, there's always going to be, let's just say at least one person that's not satisfied. So say someone that is going through chemo or has thyroid issues or has um, hormonal issues going on and you start using the product and you think it's going to like miraculously give you hair, absolutely the product will make you grow the best hair you absolutely can grow. Um, so, but that doesn't mean if you've had thin, thin, thin hair your whole life, like now this is gonna like completely change your hair. It's going to bring your hair to its best it has ever been and can be. Um, so I feel like my hair is basically as healthy as it was when I was like 15. That's kind of how I imagine it. Um, I feel like that's kind of when my hair was at its best. So it's not gonna ever be better than that, if that makes any sense. Um, so if someone tries it and then is sick and then starts losing their hair, um, I feel like it was a lot of those cases that started happening. And again, I'm not bashing anyone that that happened to. In, in fact, I'm terribly sorry for someone that is going through issues like that and you know their hair is falling out. Um, now, is the hair fallout equated to the product? Of course not. Like It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why would any hair product company put any chemical in their product to make you lose hair? I mean, that's, come on. <laughs> um, and I've said it again, I will say it again today. Um, I mean, I've said it in the past, I will say it again. If there is a chemical out there that gets rid of hair, unwanted hair companies would be billionaires by now. I mean, just imagine if there was something as gentle as conditioner and you would just slather it on your legs and over time, you know, your hair is just gone. Where is that chemical? Where is that ingredient? Because I, I want it. <laughs> um, and it's not because it doesn't exist. So there is no product scientifically proven that can um, get rid of hair. There just isn't. So, um... So why would, and if there were, why would a shampoo company put that into their products? So that's just, those are my beliefs. Um, I also think that that's just straight common sense. And so there's that. Now I think the other controversy is um, that people that sell Monet are like too harshly defensive or too, um, basically don't let you have an opinion. And... As absolutely 100% in love with the brand as I am, I do think that there are some Monate sellers that are that way. I hate to say it, but you guys know that I've always been 100% honest with you. Um, I've always been honest about the product, and if anything ever does come out where I'm like, holy crap, like this is not something I would use or something, um, I would, of course, always let you guys know. But um, and I think this happens in, in, in no way defending hairdressers, but I think oftentimes people that are selling Monate that are not hairdressers and say someone sends them a picture and says like, hey, look, I use this 
Monate shampoo and it like completely removed brass from my hair when it's not a toning shampoo. It's just regular shampoo. And as a hairdresser, I know what shampoo can do. I know more or less the science of hair and what could, what chemicals can do to hair. And so as a hairdresser, if someone sends me a picture, I can tell if that's true or not. So if it's true, I'm happy to share it. If I'm like, that, that seems like a lie. I know, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna post it. I'm not going to run with, hey guys, this is facts, you know, do this and, or use this Monate shampoo and this is gonna be your result. Um, but I have seen a lot of that going around and it's really unfortunate because then, I, and I know that it's people that are just so passionate about the brand and they really want to push their passion about it to others, but there there is a fine line between pushing it and staying really honest. Um, and I think it has been a mix of those two things. So a mix of, sure, someone had a bad reaction, but it wasn't to the product. It was probably most likely something that was going on with them. And of course, it's really easy to blame an external thing. Um, another scientific thing, this is just, again, me talking hair facts and as a hairdresser, um, What's happening to your hair right now is basically what about three months ago chemically was happening to your body. If that Does that make sense? So say, um, how do I say this? So say you had some hormonal issues, but now you're healed. You had it six months ago. Your hair has not caught up to how healed you are. So you're still feeling the aftermath of your health issues. So say that like you are feeling better now and then you start using this shampoo and you're like, I'm healthy, but your hair is still catching up and your hair is still dealing with basically maybe your cancer or um, hormonal issues or whatever that is. Um, so I, I can see how someone's like, well, I started using the product this last month and now my hair is falling out. So it's gotta be from XYZ, you know, I mean it has to be from this product and not from what was going on with my health So I can totally see how someone that isn't informed hair wise could jump to that conclusion So I'm not blaming them in any way, but I think it's it's been stories like that that then they didn't have um, a seller that supported them. So if someone ever were to come to me, a client, or not, a, not even a client, but someone that has bought the product and is like, hey, I'm having this issue, I would absolutely want to look into it. I would want, I wouldn't be like, no, there's no way. Like, that's just not what it is. Like, it, and basically not giving them a voice. And it was because of that that then they seeked, you know, a, a larger audience or a, a a bigger source where they can basically share their story and I think this is why now it's getting buzz on the news and stuff like that so there's not been any any proof that this product has damaged anyone's hair um, there is no proof that someone has actually lied or done anything like that so there is definitely um, truth to both sides at this point um, I'm, I'm just telling you as far as I know um, but I, um, but I, I, I really feel like that, sorry, I just saw a stupid comment, but I just figured, um, so many of you guys were asking and it was a good time to touch on this. So, um, but I'm, I'm very open. Sorry. I just had an olive hair fly on my nose. Um, I'm very open anytime that you guys do have a question or a concern it doesn't have to be about Monate but anything but um, with Monate just know that I'm not hiding in any way from the product um, but I uh, I have just been laying low on really talking about it as openly as I did just because I feel like this this kind of negative wave just needs to to pass and um, I do really believe that this is such an amazing product that it, it will withstand this negativity and it'll be fine, but um, I just, I feel like with negativity comes more negativity and um, I feel there's also a lot of hate from other hairdressers that don't sell the product that think like, this isn't a professional product, like how has this been approved and blah, blah, blah. So there is 
a lot of hate coming from both non-hairdressers and hairdressers. So uh, I'm just kind of explaining basically what's been going on. Someone asked about my nail polish this time. I went a lot more white than I do. It's still kind of a sheer-ish white, you can't tell. It just looks white on camera, but... And this is like the longest my nails have been. Hello, toner. Um, but yeah, sorry. I feel like I have, again, missed so many comments. Uh, okay. You're studying. Do you have any anti-aging routine or tips? Um, my skincare has actually changed a lot. Um, and that is just because I... Honestly, like, I didn't start using moisturizer until about a year and a half ago. I know, it's so bad. It's so bad. Like, my mom has always been so good with her skincare. She said she started using, like, a moisturizer at, like, 17. She started telling me at 17, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm just going to pound on all this makeup and then, like, scrape it off at night with whatever. Um, so, I know, it's really bad. But um, I finally started getting facials about, like, two years ago, and... Um, and my skin person, what do you call her? Um, esthetician, facialist, sorry. She, um, she, was, she got to know my skin and was like, you need to start using this kind of acid and this kind of um, moisturizer and all of that. So I feel like I'm a lot more informed and I've definitely tried things that she recommended I didn't like, then I kind of went my own way and I feel like now I really have um, a good regimen and I'm really happy to say that it's not like of course some of the stuff she recommended me was I think I walked out with like $600 worth of products which is insane because I was like I hope I don't like these products because if I do this is what I'm gonna be spending every month and that's insane and the products were like this big so I have some stuff that's pretty high-end I have some stuff that's like literally drugstore and that I fell in love with and super excited that I found something like that so my um, my little routine is kind of I feel like all over the place but it's I feel like it's very custom to me and it works and I, I love it so um, maybe I'll do a video um, just on that um, I, in the future sometime soon um, okay okay someone just came on and said did you get your lips done um, Relate to the party. <laughs> um, okay. Someone asked, what do you think about the Monet and the lawsuits? I, I addressed that, so hopefully you asked that before. I hope she's okay with me saying this story. Um, I feel like we're friends also, not just client and uh, realist. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not going to say her name. So um, anyway, I've been seeing her for her. I want to say four years now, but maybe three, four years, I think. Um, anyway, and she just opened up about how last year she had a pretty tough year. And I mean, I thought she was doing great. She, she seemed great. Um, but she was like, I just want you to know, like, I've felt so down on myself. And I want you to know that literally last year, my appointments with you were kind of like the break in my life where I felt good about myself again and basically like had hope and stuff like that. So she got a little bit emotional. I definitely did too. I feel like at work, I, I'm such an emotional person that if I really let myself go there, I will just, you know, like grab a box of tissue and sit down and not finish <laughs> the appointment. So I was kind of like, oh my gosh, like I'm getting super emotional, but I, I was really like holding back um, feelings and stuff like that but just a little shout out to her I don't know if she's watching but um, to clients like that and viewers that you know on a daily basis touch me in such a special way with your words um, and just I, again and I've said this in the past but for every hater out there for everyone trying to knock you down and say mean things or you know, attack your integrity, attack your career, anything. Um, at the end of the day, even if I have one person that's satisfied and happy with what I'm doing, like it makes it worth it. I will take the hate for the the love and the fact that I am 
helping even just one person. So, so yeah, um, I feel like I always tell myself I'm going to go on and do like a quick 15 minute, um, live video and here we are 40 minutes in. So, um, I just, obviously I love spending time with you guys and I actually really, really enjoy doing live videos. Um, I just feel then for people that like then jump in, they're kind of confused because then they'll start asking questions where I've already answered and I feel like that's where the confusion and issues come from by doing a longer video but what is your favorite powder lightener so always always loved Wella Blondor I feel like nothing mixes like like that formula nothing applies creamy and definitely nothing lifts as well as that um you guys know that I am a Redken brand ambassador. You guys also know that um, I only use Redken color and Redken toners. Um, but bleach, I've just always been a... Sorry, I have like... Ugh, sorry. I've always... For bleach, I've always just been a big fan of uh, Wella Blondor. And so I, I talked to a... A hairdresser recently like a friend and she was like oh my gosh have you like tried uh, I have another olive hair um, and she was like have you tried like the the new vamped kind of ah got it um, the new vamped up like Redken bleach and I was like there's a new one and she was like um, which one is it um, it's not the up to seven gosh what is it called it's like standing on my color bar at salon. Why can't I think of it? Um, anyway, I, it'll come to me. But she was like, I was like, yeah, I've tried that. That's not new. And she was like, yeah, but like the formula is different. And I was like, still not going to be as good as the Well Wander, just for sure. And she was like, no, just, I, I really like it. And she was like, I, it, it, I love it that like I use, um, Redkin developers already so it kind of just like works and I was like oh, I'll, I'll give it a try so the last time I was at Swan Centric I was like I'm just going to um I'm just gonna like pick it up and try it out and I actually really liked it um I don't think that it has as much lift as the Blondor still um but say for doing like brunette balayages and um like basically when I'm not like trying to to lift someone from like a level five to like a level nine or something, that then it's I absolutely liked it a lot actually. So um so those two are my favorite. And as soon as I remember that, this is so embarrassing. Um but I'm I'm pretty new to using it again, so that's why I guess I can't remember the name of it. I'm so sorry. Um You're a gorgeous girl and strong. I love your lips just perfect hugs for olive oh angela jane lomax it's a pretty name um thank you that's so so sweet um but your lips look great and bigger i don't know if that's a compliment or if that's just a <laughs> um do you like a blonde me by schwarzkopf honestly i've tried it i i, I do think it feels very luxurious like, there, there's something about it. I think it mixes beautifully. I don't feel that it has a ton of lift. And that, to me, I mean, I... One of the biggest things I do at the salon is work with brunettes that want to go blonde. So I really need something that is going to lift the hair well. And not just lift it well, but leave it almost toned already. Um, we don't want any of those ugly, kind of brassy tones. And I just, I feel like it gives... The best tone even before you have to tone um okay so yeah anytime I make a video longer than what 20 minutes 30 minutes we get the trolls on here so I appreciate that some of you guys are trying to to help out so thank you um how much time between bleaching sessions please answer it's different for everybody I I like to not put bleach on my hair um let's see 
I, I tend to wait like two and a half months. Sometimes in the winter, I normally go like four months without um, putting bleach on my hair. So it really depends. Um, if you have like more of a root, you can go a little bit longer. If if it's someone that's like gets a highlight um, like to the root, then I would say six to eight weeks would be the longest you, you would go. Um, uh, What's your favorite toner? A Shades EQ by Redken for sure. I don't know if you meant like what actual shade, but it depends because um, it depends on what result I'm looking for. Um, okay. I'm just circling back to see um, what comments I have missed. Um, love you, Sylvia. Those haters are just jealous of you. Um, best way to deal with them is ignore, ignore, ignore. Agreed. <laughs> and it's, trust me, like, I am, like, the least drama person. Like, I'm the kind of person that, like, if a verbal fight ensues, like, I'm the kind of person that, like, I will, like, leave. And I used to always think, like, that's so coward of me. But, like, I, I, I feel like even just being there, you're being an accessory to it. I don't know. Um... But I do feel that on YouTube, that's definitely taught me there are certain things you can't just ignore and be quiet about because sometimes being quiet and ignoring is like you're consenting that and sometimes you do have to speak up for yourself and it's tough. Like I, I that's like my least favorite thing to do. I hate having to defend myself, but sometimes it is necessary. Um, and I feel like my voice is getting more and more raspy the, the longer this video gets. Um, I know I missed a lot of your comments and I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Um, okay. Sorry. <laughs> there was something else. Oh, my, um, got my lashes done this week by my same lash girl. I'm, I'm like the worst client. You would think that because I deal with clients all day, I would be like an amazing client, but, and I'm, I'm a good client in that, like, I'm happy with every service I get, but I'm a bad lash client because I go like four times a year and that's just because of time and just convenience um even though she's absolutely amazing and fits me in literally sometimes days before or right after I text her um but um someone says oh no you disappeared was there a bad connection I don't get any notification but so anyway um anyone that is in San Francisco and looking for an eyelash person um, I go to Artisan Eyelashes in San Francisco, and it's on Southern Stockton in uh, Union Square. So, um, very central, very easy to get to. And I, I, blah, 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 what? Sorry, someone just said something, and then I was about to say something. And I, um, wait, sorry, sorry. I thought someone was asking something about lashes, but. Um, anyway, I, I absolutely love her. I've been doing my lashes when I do go in with her for, I want to say maybe another, a good three years. And she, yeah, since like, I think 2014 is when I started going to her. Um, she, she's so sweet. She's like trendy. She's young. She's cool, but extremely professional. And like, I trust her with anything. If she's like, I'm going to super glue these to your eyes. I'm like, cool. Like, if you're saying it, it must be fine. Um, not that she would ever do that. She, if anything, we started, like, really subtle. And she was like, as a new client, I want to start off with, like, sensitive glue. And then um, if you have new, no issues, we can, you know, move on to, like, more serious glue or whatever. But never had any issues. And I am actually pretty sensitive. I have pretty sensitive skin. Um, so at first I was like, ah, like I, I, the first time I got it done was like the day before I went to New York and I was like, holy crap, if I'm like show up in New York with like big bloated eyes or something, that wouldn't be cute, but no issue ever. And I absolutely love her. And yeah, so we tried something a little bit different. Um, she says it's like a new, um, 
thing, which I, I like I don't know much about and I don't think I'm supposed to talk much about, but I just want to show you them. They are, I don't know, I just feel like they're so like natural looking and I feel like with my eyes, I don't know, there's something about the shape about my eyes. Anytime I wear like strip lashes or something, it just looks extremely fake. I don't know. Um, like not cute. Like it looks very heavy. Like, like I ha just have fringe on my, I don't know. But anyway, Melissa, um, my lash girl, she is so amazing at always giving me something really natural. And she was the one that actually recommended, because a lot of you guys ask. Um, so I always felt like my eye looked heavy at the end. So I used to always think like really long on the ends. That'll counteract that and make it look better. And it just never like really looked right. And she was like, no, actually with your like eye shape, you should get like shorter on the ends and I was like that's just gonna make it look really round and like not cute and she did it and I was like holy crap that's what I needed so that's what we always do um so I don't know if you can tell kind of like just shorter on the sides and longer on top and I think that gives a very like natural like almost fan like kind of effect so I know you guys always ask like what do you get done like and I think she always does like mink lashes I really don't know like we kind of change it up once in a while and she's just I'm always just like do what you think I just like them to look long and natural and pretty <laughs> and she um yeah she does an amazing job so again um I will update the info in the description box with her info if you guys are in the city and um looking to get your lashes done and she has an amazing team as well so Okay, I've been on here for almost an hour. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love you guys. What an amazing bleh, what an amazing way to end the week with talking with you guys. And I have a another video coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. We are actually uploading a little bit earlier tomorrow. Um just like we did last week. I just realized when I post it like later on Saturdays in the East Coast, it's like afternoon. So I just figured uploading it a little bit earlier on Saturdays um, gives um, kind of everyone sort of an opportunity to get to the video while it's like still new and fresh. So anyway, for those of you that are here today and do watch the video tomorrow, leave me a black heart. Um, thank you for all the hearts and everyone say bye. Um, so yeah, I will know that it's my cool, super close, um, super awesome family that's visiting um, my video tomorrow from today's live session. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining. I love you guys. I hope you have, oh, black hearts, yay. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. It's been pouring and super awful weather here all week, hence the, the red and pretending that it's nice out. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it's supposed to be nicer weather this weekend. So hope you all have um, an amazing weekend. And I love you guys so much. So um, for those of you that are still here, let me just show you my cool sculpting results. Just so that you guys don't think that um, I was lying. So, uh, so I don't know if you can see with the background. But it's that right there used to be a lot bulkier. I have like all these things in the background so I don't know if you guys can actually see it. Okay, we did it.